Let's take a deeper dive into your team setup and channels. When I click the three dots beside my class team, I can actually manage my team. I can add channels. As we saw before, I can add members. I could even leave my team if I really wanted to. But let's start off by looking at manage team. And specifically, we're going to be interested in the settings area because I want to control my members' permissions, my students' permissions. They're the members. I click that, and I have a variety of things I could do. Depending on the type of course, you could actually let the students create and update channels themselves. By default, that's not enabled and probably not something a lot of people want. Same with deleting and restoring. The bottom two are also important. These are default on. And do I want my students in channels where they have permission to post messages, do I want them to be able to then go back and delete them or go back and edit them? Again, depending on your use case, that could be important to maybe turn off or maybe to and leave on. So worth checking and deciding. But as I said, I can also add channels. These again, you can think are kind of like discussion forums. So maybe I want a channel for a specific group topic or a specific weekly topic. Or, and maybe if I really want, I want to have channels for groups because I can actually make a group one channel. And instead of having the standard access where every single person can see it, I can actually specify a private channel where only specific people can see it. So that is an option as well. And now I would have the option to say which students are going to be added. So I could go group by group and add them. Right now I'm going to skip it. And you can see my group one has a lock symbol to indicate it's a private channel, similar to one I'd already made before. Office hours doesn't. This is the one that was more open and I can make as many channels as I want. Again, this could be useful for group work. So each of them would have their own meeting space. You can see, of course, all of them, but students would only see the ones they're a member of. I can also control what people can do in each channel. Let's start with the general channel because it's a little different. Remember, this one's there right off the bat. If I click the three dots, I can manage this channel and I get to choose what people can do. Basically, do I want to be the only one who can post messages or do I want others like my students? Depending, if I'm using my general channel as my place where we're going to be meeting each week and maybe it's where I want to post some important announcements and I don't want those to get overrun by others posting, I might say only the owners can post. If I go to the office hours channel as an example and click the three dots, I can also manage this channel, but it's going to look a little different. I can choose to allow someone to moderate it. The owners in my case would be moderating this. And I would then also have the options to decide what students can do. And I might just turn off moderation. I might want everyone just to be able to post freely. In that case, do I want anyone to be able to post? Well, likely we probably don't have guests anyway. So it's allowing my students to post a message and start it. Unless again, I want to turn on the moderation. And finally, it is worth noting that even within a meeting, there's a chat area as well. So I go to that meeting I created earlier, click in, there is the chat area where I could send important updates just for that meeting. You can see the descriptions posted already, but I could also say maybe the day before, remember to read something or other important updates and chat with my students in here which will actually be saved after the meeting is over as well, which is convenient.